Hello, I'm Benjamin Balmas, Director of Research and Development at Direct Electron. For the past 15 years, our company has been working to push the limits of direct detection technology through custom-designed sensors and precisely engineered camera systems. Recently, our research and development efforts culminated in our groundbreaking ultra-fast electron counting camera, Apollo. We've been thrilled to see the impressive results from the first users of Apollo, and you may have seen some of these results already. It's clear that Apollo is a giant leap in counting performance. Today, I want to focus on how Apollo works and what makes it so fast and elegant compared to the older electron counting cameras. Let's start by looking at the old way of doing direct detection and electron counting, which helped spark the cryo-EM resolution revolution about 10 years ago. We start with a CMOS monolithic active pixel sensor, commonly called a MAP sensor, which is radiation hardened and can detect direct bombardment by electrons in a TEM. The sensor is attached to a circuit board that reads and resets its pixels. When an electron hits the sensor, it deposits a variable amount of energy in one or more pixels, resulting in voltage accumulating within the pixels. During readout, the accumulated voltage in each pixel is output as an analog signal. This signal is then digitized by an analog digital converter, or ADC. Then, the digitized pixel values are sent to a computer, either an embedded processor or a separate system. At this point, the pixel values represent the total integrated intensity in each frame. If you perform dark and gain correction on these values within a computer, you end up with integrating or linear mode frames. But we want counting mode because it delivers significantly better data quality. So the computer subtracts the background, performs thresholding to separate the noise from the signal, finds the bright spots in each frame, and centroids each bright spot to produce a counted frame. By summing many of these counted frames, the computer can save dose fractionated counting movies suitable for cryo-EM and other methods. Unfortunately, CMOS sensors suffer from reset noise, which means that the background is constantly changing. To reduce noise, a technique called CDS, or correlated double sampling, can be used. For most sensors, this requires reading out the sensor twice. The first time is to read a CDS frame containing the background value of each pixel, and the second time is to read the final values containing the detected electrons. So there are two analog readouts and two digitization steps per frame, and the output frame rate is cut in half. In the computer, the first CDS frame is subtracted from the data frame to try to remove some of the reset noise. Then the result is thresholded and counted. Notice something about this system. The entire signal chain until the very last step in the computer is dealing with integrating mode or linear mode data. It's only at the very end of the process in the computer that the data is converted into counting mode. Still, when it was originally developed more than a decade ago, this technology of integrating mode direct detection sensors and then its subsequent adaptation to be used in counting mode was revolutionary. Yet we all know there are limitations. We know these systems are expensive. It has many components and requires high-speed analog signal chains. We found that these systems can be fragile with many potential points of failure. We know that these systems remain noisier than we'd like. And I mean that both in terms of noise in the data and for some cameras, actually audible noise in the room due to the powerful computer necessary to make this all work. And we must deal with the fact that the system is relatively slow, limiting the imaging conditions to a narrow range of relatively sparse illumination. About eight years ago, we started to wonder if there was a better way than this brute force analog method of counting. So we started a new R&D project to develop an elegant way to do electron counting in hardware. The result was a patented new event-based direct detection technology. Finally, in 2021, we announced the groundbreaking Apollo camera containing this technology. Here's how it works. We start with a CMOS map sensor with 4096 by 4096 pixels. At the highest level, this looks similar at first to previous generation direct detection sensors. Similar pixel size, in this case 8 microns, similar number of electronic components in each pixel, similar radiation hardening. To increase speed, the sensor is broken up into 8 segments, each of which is operated in parallel. 
Just like the old design for direct detection sensors, the sensor is mounted to a circuit board containing the necessary electronics and power sources to operate the sensor. But unlike older sensors, the output is not analog linear mode data. Instead, the edge of each segment contains two additional blocks. First, a sense amplifier, and second, a priority encoder. I will describe the operation of these two blocks in a moment, but for now there are two important things to know. First, while the complex circuitry in these blocks are part of the sensor, they are at the edges of the sensor so they can be effectively shielded from the electron beam. And second, these two blocks work together with the unique pixel architecture in the Apollo sensor to generate an output completely digital output representing detected events on the sensor. This output is fed into an FPGA, or Field Programmable Gate Array, which is a powerful integrated circuit designed for real-time processing. The FPGA performs centroiding on each detected event, generating super-resolution, dose-fractionated movie frames in onboard memory. You may have heard of DDR memory, which stands for Double Data Rate Memory. Because of the extraordinary data rate in Apollo, it uses Quadruple Data Rate, or QDR memory. Finally, these movie frames are output to the computer to be saved and used for image processing and reconstruction. Notice that the Apollo sensor isn't an integrated or linear mode sensor that's simply been adapted to work for electron counting through post-processing. Instead, this next generation direct detection sensor is elegantly designed for electron counting from the very beginning. So let's zoom in now and get a detailed look at how this works. Like any imaging sensor, detection occurs on an array of pixels. When an electron hits a pixel, it deposits energy in that pixel, and often one or more neighboring pixels as well. The sensitivity depends on the ability to distinguish this signal from the incident electrons from the background noise inherent in the sensor. Recall that one of the major sources of noise in a CMOS sensor is reset noise, which is addressed by CDS mode. But instead of approximating CDS in software like other cameras, we've built it into the pixel design. On Apollo, the baseline value of every pixel is continually sampled on chip on the timescale of hundreds of microseconds. This ensures that the signal from an incident electron is added on top of a known baseline. Then, ultra-fast electronics are used to share pixel values with a structure on the edge of the sensor called a sense amplifier. Essentially, the sense amplifier compares the signal from the pixels to a user-defined threshold value. Pixels with signal levels above the threshold are recorded as detection events. The location of detection events from the sense amplifier is passed to another structure on the edge of the sensor called a priority encoder. This packages detection events and neighboring pixels into event blocks. Recall that detected electrons often generate signal in more than one pixel. And this is helpful because it enables us to estimate the incidence location with super resolution precision. Then finally, these event blocks are output from the sensor and sent to the onboard FPGAs for centroiding. Notice the things that are happening before anything is ever output from the sensor. Apollo has on-chip CDS to remove reset noise, on-chip thresholding to disregard background noise and identify real detection events, and digital noise-free output. This combination delivers both ultra-low noise and ultra-high speed. Now, let's look at what happens in the FPGAs. The priority encoder outputs event blocks containing detection events. To optimize speed, Apollo's event blocks are 4 by 16 pixels, 64 total pixels each. To simplify the drawing, though, I'll only draw half of an event block here. When the FPGA receives an event block, it looks for the detection event it contains. A detection event consists of one or more connected pixels. The FPGA calculates the centroid of the detection event with 2x2 super resolution precision and records that count on the dose fractionated movie frame in onboard memory, which will later be output to the computer. You may wonder what would happen if an event block contains multiple distinct detection events. In this case, the FPGA distinguishes these two events as separate and centroids each event separately. Finally, what happens if a detection event spreads across the boundary between event blocks? When the FPGA sees a detection event on the boundary of an event block, it also looks at the adjacent event block to see if the detection event spreads across. 
If so, the event is stitched together and centroided correctly. As you can see, our R&D effort to develop this new sensor technology was not just a small step, and it resulted in a giant leap in counting speed and data quality. Let's review what we've learned. Apollo's direct detection pixel array is designed with continuous on-chip CDS to minimize reset noise. Structures at the edge of the sensor perform on-chip thresholding to efficiently distinguish signal from noise. Signals are then packaged into event blocks for ultra-fast digital readout. Finally, FPGAs perform real-time centroiding of detection events, outputting a stream of super-resolution dose-fractionated movie frames, which are saved to an SSD array in open format such as MRC or TIFF LZW. This is quite a difference compared to the older way of performing counting. Apollo is elegant. It's a sensor that was designed specifically for electron counting. Noise reduction and event detection occur on chip. That makes it really fast. Plus, because it's an elegant solution for electron counting, its cost is also lower than older technology. So, what's next? Well, the next step is up to you. How will you use Apollo? What incredible results will you achieve with next-generation counting technology? We can't wait to find out.